All right, guys, Boy 32 here. Check it out. We're sitting in the Freedom Office. I'm getting ready to get on the road here, which is why you don't see any rifles back behind me. Sitting out in the office, getting ready to do a video on bulk carrier groups when uh, my wife sends me an article from Politico. This is authored by a guy named Tyler Pager, uh, and it's titled, Biden starts staffing a commission on the Supreme Court reform. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is big. This is huge. This is what this country is going to get for electing that person. And I'm not even going to say his name. Well, I just did, but I can't stand it. So let's talk about this. He pushed the idea as a candidate during the Amy Coney Barrett confirmation fight. Now he's getting it done. So the whole deal about, well, the Constitution means everything. These jackasses don't care. What they want to do is they want to change the Constitution to fit their agenda. First of all, he's killed jobs. Second of all, well, I guess all the pipe fitters are going to have to go out there and get him another job. Secondly, he said uh, he's not going to in kill fracking. Well, shit. He's not going to ban fracking, but what he's going to do is he's going to regulate it to the extent that you can't do fracking. These guys, they know how to manipulate words that, well, I didn't lie about that. I said I wasn't going to ban it, but I'm just going to prevent you from being able to do it. Way to go. All right, so the Biden administration is moving forward with the creation of a bipartisan commission to study reforms to the Supreme Court and federal judiciary. What a crack of shit. What are they going to do? Well, we're going to go ahead and appoint judges to the point where we are now in control. So a lopsided uh, Supreme Court. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. The commission will be housed under the purview of the White House Counsel's Office and filled out with behind-the-scenes help of the Biden campaign's lawyer, Bob Bauer, who will co-chair the commission. Its specific mandate is being decided. <laughs> But in a signal that the commission is indeed moving ahead, some members have already been selected, according to the multiple people familiar with the discussions. This is absolutely disgusting. And talking about a couple of the individuals that are involved in this thing, we've got, let's see, Caroline Fredrickson, the former president of the American Constitution Society, and Jack Goldsmith, a Harvard Law School professor and a former assistant attorney general in the Bush Department of Justice. Well, that makes it okay, right? will also serve on the commission. Uh, Fredrickson also handed that she is intellectually supportive of ideas like court expansion. Well, how can you have somebody on a commission who is supposed to be bipartisan, but yet she's supportive of this whole thing? The executive director of the LGBT Bar Association and foundation of the Greater New York, I often point out to people who aren't lawyers that the Supreme Court is not defined as a nine-person body in the Constitution, and it has changed. Many times. Rodriguez. Opinions on the court reforms are less clear. Goldsmith's selection, meanwhile, is likely to have one frustrate progressive. <laughs> it's one to prog frustrate progressives. A senior fellow at the Hoover Institute, Goldsmith did not support Trump and is a friend of the co-author Bauer, but he was vocal advocate of Brett Kavanaugh's appointment to the high court. So this is it, guys. This is where they're going. They're going to go ahead, they're going to create this commission to talk about the Supreme Court Justice Reformation. Reform. Just like they, what they want to do with you is they want you to, oh, I don't know, reprogram, in the words of Kate or oh, Kirk. You know, it's amazing. You sit there and listen to John Brennan talk about how if you have a different idea of those individuals who are in power right now, then you are basically are a domestic terrorist. It's amazing. So what they're going to do is they're going to silent you, they're going to silent our Constitution, and they are going to silent the Supreme Court justices right now by going ahead and throwing an overwhelming majority of Democrats on the court. <sighs> Commissions are often places where ideas go to die, and there is no time on the clock to reform the court, said Aaron Belkin, the director of Take Back the Court, a progressive group advocating for adding seats to the Supreme Court. The entire agenda of what needs to get done is in jeopardy thanks to a stolen federal courts. And this is what they think. They think that Donald Trump stole the federal courts. It's interesting to me that Amy Coney Barrett was nominated, okay, and confirmed and appointed to the Supreme Court to the dismay that the, the Democrats were like, this is not fair, this is evil. You know what? The Democrats are a bunch of jackasses because they didn't play ball the entire time that Donald Trump was in office. And yet they ask him, please don't do this. It's not fair. Let the people decide. They decided in 2016 when he elected Donald Trump on who was going to be appointed to the Supreme Court during his tenure. 
No one asked anybody any favors. No one did him any favors. He fought for his damn office the entire day, and they still can't leave it alone with this feel good, we need to heal. I'm excited to the fact that, well, Joe Biden says there, will we need to heal the country? No, what he wants to do is he wants to heal his people while we are a little, uh, are inaccessible. So in any case, this is what they're planning on doing, guys. This is the very beginning. What the just the, the executive orders that have been put in place are absolutely asinine, and they are there to appease people. And this is what this government is. They are a government of appeasement. They are not a government of leadership. We'll lead from the front. If somebody wants something, we'll get it. Unless it's part of the, I don't know, Second Amendment. And this is why I bring this whole thing up. I'm not trying to get into the political aspects of it, but this, the dire consequences are we could lose our Second Amendment because of this. We could lose the right to protect ourselves. The Second Amendment means shall not be infringed. It doesn't put stipulations on what we can and cannot have, with exception of, oh, I don't know, the NFA. And eventually what's going to happen in these, uh, what do they call them, FUDs, who don't fight for the Second Amendment and you vote Democrat, well, you're going to lose your high-power sniper rifle here pretty soon, and the only thing you're going to have is a, mm, is a damn muzzle loader. Y'all leave me, y'all, y'all leave me your thoughts down below. I don't rarely get fired up like this, but this is exactly how we lose our rights. They are stacking the courts, and next thing you know, D.C. and Puerto Rico will be states, and we will never see the light of day as a Republican in office again. Let's go to Boy 32. Guys, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and hammer right down. So, support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform who fight for our Constitution as it was written by our founding fathers and not reformed like these assholes in D.C. want it to be. I want to give a special thanks to everyone out there who gave me uh, uh, some thoughts of prayers for my brother. Also, those who donated... Uh, there are a couple people out there. I know one who uh, probably don't want his name out there, but man, he donated $500. And sir, I thank you so much. Uh, I'll put the GoFundMe page down below if you guys are still available. I know Friday's a long ways away, but we'd greatly really appreciate it. So with that being said, y'all be good. I'm out of here.